we're seeing a spear, and that is also something that chimps have been documented to make. Hi, I'm Dr. Maria Mayer, and I'm a primatologist and National Geographic explorer. I have studied in South America the white-faced sake and headed to Congo to study the western lowland gorillas as well as mountain gorillas in Rwanda. Today we'll be looking at monkey and ape attacks in movies and judge how real they are. Gorillas spend most of their time on the ground. I have observed them climbing trees with, you know, a lot of skill and dexterity, but scaling the Empire State Building, you know, especially an animal that size, not too probable. There's this iconic visual that you see in movies of gorillas beating on, on their chest, but it's not really a form of aggression, if you will. It's more of a warning. And while they're incredibly strong, and believe me, I get adrenaline rush every time I'm charged, they're not violent animals. The, the only time that I've ever really witnessed a gorilla be aggressive is when another male tries to sort of hone in and, and take one of their females and really kind of destroy that family unit. Yes, these are really strong animals, but there's also a very gentle and nurturing side to them that you don't often see in the media. <laughs> King Kong is depicted as being 25 feet tall, which is nowhere near even what we know as the largest ape from the fossil record, which is Gigantopithecus, is estimated to be 10 feet tall, uh, disappeared about 300,000 years ago, and is not even half the size of what King Kong is depicted to be. Because this is such an iconic film, and they do make an attempt to bring in gorilla qualities such as that protective and gentle nature that he shows Andero. I'm gonna give it a three out of 10 just for that. In this scene, the chimp is triggered by the popping sound of a balloon. So absolutely, if he associates that sound, the popping of a balloon with like a trainer who would, you know, beat him or that sort of thing, it's gonna elicit a super aggressive reaction, especially in the entertainment business where so many of these animals are abused, essentially. No, 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 no
but it's not often that you see this interaction. Funny enough, I am one of a really a few of a handful of scientists who observe Western lowland gorillas in the wild and actually saw a leopard attack a silverback gorilla. The gorilla escaped, but not unscathed, and had a massive wound to its stomach, which took months and months to heal. It is actually very dangerous to the gorilla when those kind of interactions happen. So in this scene where you see Tarzan being raised by apes, that is highly unlikely and almost impossible. Because humans are highly altricial, right, they really depend on the mother and all of our behavior is learned, there is no way that a gorilla would possibly be able to teach a human everything that they would need in order to survive in the wild. This, this movie holds too special a place in my heart and I have to give it a 10. There's ape shelters that might house gorillas and, and orangs and chimpanzees, but they would never be in the same enclosure. However, there are places where you do find gorillas and chimpanzees coexisting, although not often overlapping in the same territory. <laughs> The assertion of dominance is pretty prevalent in chimpanzees because there is a hierarchical structure where you have an alpha male and then everything that follows suit. The way it's depicted in the scene, it really depends on the alpha male. Uh, just like humans, chimpanzees have very individual personalities and you have some, well, that are complete jerks and they will pick on another group member if, if they so want to. And even though most people are aware of the term alpha male, the truth is, is that females are also in charge and they are also helping to lead the group. And so oftentimes they will choose and prefer leaders who are generally a more gentle alpha male, although they still will assert their dominance. You don't often see where they're just like picking on a particular individual in the group. <laughs> this one is a hard one to have like a real reaction to because it is so beyond the realm of possibility. In Planet of the Apes, we see interspecies collaboration. There are some examples like chimpanzees and gorillas actually helping each other, but interspecies collaboration and altruism, while not unheard of, it's really not the norm. While I'm not anticipating chimps overtaking our society anytime soon, there is something to be said about the high level of intelligence that chimps do display and are capable of, um, even in comparison to humans, which isn't really fair because intelligence is really a product of an animal's environment. I'm gonna be overly generous and give it a two out of 10. Seeing this ape help a juvenile ape is something that I've witnessed many, many times, but that's all circumstantial. Of course, they need to be genetically related, but more often than not, you see the, for example, silverback uh, helping the young ones, really teaching them the ropes, getting them out of trouble, out of danger. The cutest scene I've ever seen in the wild is the silverback teaching the young males how to beat on their chest. Apes actually have very emotional expressions and you can definitely see when an ape is angry or happy or shy. It's sometimes easy to misread the facial expressions of an ape. Like most people will see a chimp or a gorilla smiling and they think, oh, that's a happy ape. And it's quite the contrary. So you have to know what you're looking for. But so far as an array of emotions, apes will definitely show it. So I have never witnessed uh, an ape fighting with some kind of a reptile. Um, however, if the situation should arise, there's no question that a gorilla is 
powerful and intelligent and I would think has the upper hand that I know of there is no reptile the size of Godzilla so I think they're good probably gonna make a lot of people mad but I'm gonna give this a 1 out of 10 for realism and the only part to me that felt realistic was this sweet interaction between the older ape and the juvenile Funny enough, this is actually very realistic in that chimps are known to organize hunts where every individual has a role to play, a, a driver, a catcher, uh, you know, almost like bait and instigators, like every single one of them has a purpose. So the idea that chimps would organize themselves in such a way and plan a hunt is very realistic. Koba is a bonobo and bonobos are actually known for make love not war and what's funny to me is that the look of Koba is very aggressive. It's not the sort of gentler softer look that we know bonobos to have. <laughs> Chimps are highly arboreal, so they are, in fact, very skilled and very agile up in the trees. And they can move through them very quickly. So nonverbal communication and gesturing, like we see here, uh, is actually not uncommon. Uh, while we generally hear chimps being really loud and vocal, there's also much more subtle ways in which they are able to relay a message and communicate. So Caesar eventually teaches the sign language to the other apes that we all know, like the famous Coco the gorilla learning how to sign language and chimpanzees also have been taught how to sign. But this is not something that naturally occurs in nature. This is something that is learned behavior. So if a chimpanzee is taught sign language, they are in fact very capable of passing that on to another generation of chimpanzees because it's all learned. So chimps aren't necessarily known for sophisticated tools, but we know the famous story of the little fishing tool that Jane Goodall documented uh, with chimps fishing for termites. And in this case, we're seeing a spear. And that is also something that chimps have been documented to make. And they use them to actually spear galagos out of tree hollows. You know, looking at Caesar, the alpha male in, in Planet of the Apes, uh, there is a very realistic appearance. When I look at Caesar, it's almost like the eyes are slightly more human-like. They've been softened up a little bit. Overall, the, the features that we see in Planet of the Apes, to me, tend to look and appear a little bit more human-like than we see in wild chimps. It really shows what chimpanzees are intelligent enough and, and capable of doing, which is to organize a hunt, make spears. So yeah, I'm thinking nine out of 10. <laughs> Those are mandrels. We should go, 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 go. Mandrels have a very distinctive look with unusually colorful, almost painted faces. So they got that right, but the behavior completely unrealistic. Mandrels are the largest of all the monkeys, but they are so shy and reclusive that the chances of you ever observing a mandrel in the wild is pretty much no. You wouldn't expect that when you look at their canines, but they have an omnivorous diet. They will eat fruits, roots, insects, reptiles, and amphibians. While they're really large animals with these massive canines, they're not actual predators. <laughs> the idea of this mob of mandrels, they often move in very large groups. Sometimes these groups are more than 100 individuals swinging through this structure and trees is just completely unrealistic. They spent most of their time on the ground. The easiest way to tell the difference between an ape and a monkey is the presence of a tail and monkeys. 
And mandrills are old world monkeys, which is different from new world monkeys. And the really the easiest way to remember that is that old world monkeys are from Africa. So they're more closely related to apes, while new world monkeys live in South America and are not as closely related to the apes. I'm gonna give this two and a half out of 10 because the CGI is pretty good, but the behavior completely unrealistic. <laughs> What we see here is a group of hominins in Africa, and they're made to really look like apes. Hominins, of course, are part of our ancestral lineage. Humans are upright and bipedal. Um, this has a more ape-like posturing and, and movement to them, and that is actually based on real anatomy from fossil findings. Humans and apes do share an ancestral lineage, and humans are part of the great apes. But that's not to say that humans evolved from apes, which is, I think, a very common narrative. So we diverged about five to seven million years ago, and that led to what we know of as apes today. There was this previous notion that what separated humans from the rest of the animal kingdom was the ability to make and use tools. And as we know, Jane Goodall then observed a chimpanzee making and using a tool. So that was the famous question, do we, you know, redefine tool or do we change the definition of, of what it means to be human? What we see here is that there are two rivaling groups competing for a watering hole. Some apes are territorial, but certainly not all of them. So you have orangutans, for example, in Indonesia, who are not known for being territorial, but then gibbons, which are highly territorial. But chimpanzees are also extremely territorial. Chimpanzees are known for patrolling an area and actually attacking and sometimes even killing what they perceive to be a rival in their territory. What we do know is that there no other species of ape is more cooperative than humans. So much of what we're seeing in this scene is actually possible and, and even probable in some of the ape species. I'm actually gonna give this one a five out of 10. Hey, Dexter, you wanna give me the keys? I just wanna love you. What a good boy. That's okay. Oh, okay. This is so funny and strangely accurate because capuchin monkeys are unbelievably mischievous and clever and smart, which are actually quite popular in the entertainment industry because of the fact that they are so trainable. There are numerous examples of primates snatching things like macaques in Bali, or I've seen adolescent gorillas run right up and take a camera out of somebody's hand. Primates, especially when they're habituated to humans, can be fearless, and they'll go right up to a human and steal whatever's in your hands. I need those. Hey, don't encourage him. So believe it or not, this clip is actually quite realistic. And I have been in situations in South America where they have in fact like taunted and, and almost recruited each other into the taunting and throwing stuff. It's a, it's a great movie, but they used a real monkey and monkeys have no role in the entertainment industry. So zero out of 10. So I've seen a lot of orangs in the wild, but that is by far the largest <laughs> and definitely seems to be uh, more of a depiction of Giganopithecus. Despite the fact that Giganopithecus is the largest known primate fossil, you would think it's more closely related to gorillas, which are the largest living ape. However, genetically, they're actually much more closely related to orangutans. Here's a skull of an orang. Now, you can see this is much smaller than what we're seeing in that scene, but we don't have a skull. For Giganopithecus. In fact, we don't have any bone remains either. All we have are the teeth. So if you see the canines here, which are quite large, you can imagine then what a Giganopithecus canine would look like. I'm gonna rate this one one out of 10. There was really nothing that realistic about it. I think my favorite 
ape clip is from Dawn of Planet of the Apes, just because the idea of these chimps organizing a hunt and having specific roles and making a spear it's all so realistic thanks for watching and if you found this video ape peeling why don't you click on the next one to watch another